I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is DJ Bliss, aka Marwan Parham Alawadi. 80% off, bro. <laughs> that would have been a good one. <laughs> Get my Arabic on. <clears throat> he doesn't forget. <laughs> That's literally what I have to do. Definitely a Kiwi. <laughs> I haven't talked this much since radio. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good write-up. I might steal it afterwards. Yeah. Sure. Use as my bio. <laughs> Ever met someone who stands out? They have their own vibe. They have their own timing. They have their own style. They have their own voice. They exude leadership qualities in the sense that they don't look for a path to follow. They pave one for themselves. One of the many ways that my guest learned to express himself was through music. He began by starting his own band at school. That band went on to win the battle of the bands. As he grew older, my guest then turned to DJing. Very soon, he began gathering a following of people who connected with his ways, with his style, with his vibe. From playing in Dubai to then going on to play at the Ministry of Sound in London, which would then become the beginning of one of many international spots. In the early 2000s, my guest hosted a show called 20 something, followed by That's Entertainment both of which were on the Dubai One channel. With his popularity on the rise, he thought to himself, why not take the passion of music to the next level? So instead of just mixing music, he decided to make it. And because all that wasn't enough, my guest decided to create and host some of the hottest parties in Dubai. When I'm saying hot, I'm talking about the likes of Most Def, DJ Jazzy Jeff, DJ Drama being there that kind of hot. And then his collaborations with the likes of international artists like Shaggy and Grammy Award winning artist Wyclef Jean, where he co-produced his album April Showers. And for those of you who've clocked up enough years, then you too would know Cardinal Official. Well, he featured on my guest's first track, Let It Go, which reached the top 10 in the Middle East charts. My guest then created a compilation album titled Made in Dubai, which skyrocketed up in the charts and stayed there for weeks at number one. Another single, Crazy, followed in 2017, where he collaborated with the Dominican actress and artist Melly Mel, which peaked at number three in the Middle East. And then there was the song that took us back to our Middle Eastern ways, I Need Karak. That went viral almost instantly. And then in 2018, my guest collaborated with AO Beats to create their hit song, It's Your Birthday. That created a lot of noise in the region. My guest has shared the stage with, no, wait a second, who hasn't he shared the stage with? Because every time I open up my Instagram account and see my guest's feed, I pretty much see all the celebrities I know with him. So he doesn't just share the stage with them, he finds himself in the middle of it all. I mean, I'm talking about the likes of Mariah Carey, Paris Hilton, Nicki Minaj, Akon, Chris Brown, Aerosmith, Prince, Hussein Al Jasmi, Beyonce, Kanye West, Fat Joe, French Montana, Will Smith, like I said, everyone. In short, if a celebrity is coming to Dubai, is in Dubai, or is partying in Dubai, the chances are they're hanging out with my guest. Music might be my guest's source of inspiration and perhaps the way where he was able to show his difference. But there is much more to him. He is the owner of Bliss Inc. He is the owner of Beats and Cuts, a barber shop. He is the founder of the 411 Nights. He's also the founder of Select, a talent agency. He's a content creator, a social media influencer, and an ambassador to several brands. My guest has gone from being fired from his first job because he was trying to learn how to DJ on the job to today becoming a resident DJ at some of the most prestigious clubs and a household name for us folks living here in Dubai. The name known by celebrities around the world, the name that hosted the Special Olympics in Abu Dhabi, the F1 Grand Prix, and one of the iconic faces that launched the one-year countdown to Dubai's 
2020 Expo. He's the boy you've seen on TV, the boy you've heard on the radio, the boy whom you've seen while partying at some of Dubai's hottest clubs. The artist, the entertainer, the performer, pioneer and pinnacle figure of music in the UAE. This is How Do They Do It. I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is DJ Bliss, aka Marwan Parham Alawadi. Damn, that was, that was a good write-up, bro. That was really good. Seriously. I'm serious, too. I'm at, you didn't send this to me. I'm going to be my new bio. You're a hot man to catch, but I understand why. Because you're everywhere, man. <laughs> everywhere I look at Dubai. DJ Bliss is playing here. DJ trying, Bliss. Trying DJ keep, Bliss. Trying to keep it uh, busy. Good man. It's good good, man. It's a good, it's a, it's a good situation to be in, I Respect, guess. bro. Better than not having nothing to do, right? 100%. <laughs> and, man, your aura, your style, everything about you and everything you've achieved. But to me, when I see all everything that you're doing, it seems like you, it's saying this is just the beginning. What's your vision for the next 10 years? Um, the, I think the, I mean, you're pretty right about that. You know, I always have this uh, mentality or sort of attitude of, you know, this is just the beginning and you're going to see more. But I've never really been a person that's looked that far ahead, like 10 years or five years. Kind of like, I don't know, I'm more of like an immediate uh, future type of person. Like I try to figure out what I'm trying to do literally right now in the next couple of months. And if I have to plan, so I don't really know where I want to be in a year or 10 years, but I knew I know what I'm going to be doing uh, or a couple of things that I will be doing. Like I know I want to put out a song next year. Right. I don't know uh, which country I'm going to be living in or what I'm going to say yes or no to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. But so take us through your thinking. I guess the underlying or the, the, kind of the, the bed set of your mind is positive. It has to be. 100%, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't get the, like, the, the opposite, negative mindset. Right. Um, I don't think it even registers here. It doesn't no. seem like it. I was reading, um, I, was, I was on Instagram, and Fat Man Scoop was wearing a t-shirt, and it said, uh, negativity just never wins. You know, a simple line. It's, yep. it's, it's very true. It just never wins. You may be able to get through. You may be able to, you know, con your way into a couple of things, but it's just, there's no, there's no uh, winning at the finish line, I think. Yeah. Look at this. You don't win championships by by just being normal, by just being average. Very true. Very very true. Thanks hey man. For this, man, that's all right, man. I hope you find some value in it. Thank you. Uh, I think you very much exude a lot of the messages in there. Yeah, I try to. Yeah. I try to, uh, to to sort of like uh, gravitate towards like just you know positivity and focus and I'm definitely a believer that you yeah. have. You, you get whatever you give. Yes, it's true. And uh, I think people don't understand the concept. I always tell people, for sure there's nobody out there is like, I want to drive a regular car, I want to live a regular house, I want to fly economy all the time, I want to like, and no one says that. And for sure oh, everyone want wants a better life and they want more money, but what are you willing to do to get it is I think the, the key thing that people yeah. don't get. And then the problem is they don't ask the question, and then when they ask the question, they're not willing to face the answers. Yeah. Get inspired. Whether you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, the last thing you want to do is blow your budget on accommodation, which is why I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. Beyond being price sensitive, what I love about Rove Hotels is the fact that they are a combination of cafe, culture, and just coolness. Even my guests, many of them, when they arrive before we record or after we finish recording the podcast, they actually comment. They go, wow, this place is cool. The vibe is amazing. And it is amazing. So if you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. Now, you're the, the youngest of five kids? No, I'm actually the middle child. The middle of five kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have this as a, as a young kid, like growing up? Did you know that you're different? I have a different style, I, I feel different, I, I sense different, was, um, was that in you? Yeah, I, I mean, I felt it a little bit, but I thought more than anything it was a like middle child syndrome. Okay. You know, because sort of my elder two brothers were always hanging out, and then my younger brother and sister were hanging out, so I was like, like by myself in my own space and my own thoughts. But could be both, could be a little bit of that middle child, and it could be, you know, my mom says that I was when I was a kid, I was like a real troublemaker, and okay. I, like, I was really like, you know, she says I was different. I don't know what she means by different. 
don't know if she's just trying to she's trying to be nice now. Trying to be nice and not hurt my feelings, but she's like, yeah, you were like, you know, you were your mind was set on something like you have to have it like when you were younger. Yeah. So I don't know. It could be. Um, yeah. I mean, I do. I definitely feel like you know. I. I not that I'm different in any special way, but I mean, you probably know about this, right? Ninety-five percent of the world's population all kind of live in the same, you know, structure ways of doing things. Yeah. yeah. And then there's the five percent. So I'm trying to be in the one percent. <laughs> right. But I'm, I'm trying to sense: was this a genetic thing? Was it something that happened while you were growing up? Like, were you at school and you were going? I'm not feeling what these guys are doing. Like, no, no, no. I don't think uh, not so much. I mean, again, same thing in school. Sort of was in dabbing in music a little bit. Yeah. You know, I was running my school radio station. Was How a part old of the, then? Like 14, 15, okay. 16. Those last couple of years, I was doing it, and then also I wasn't really like hanging out with the cool kids of school, so I wasn't really getting invited to the parties and all that. So I'm like, you know, how can I really get in? So I was like, DJing. You know, so that's sort of that was like kind of the start. And. You know, like I said, like, like you said in the intro, I was dabbing in the band stuff uh, quite a bit, so music was uh, definitely around. Uh, and this was before the radio station days? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. My brother was playing the guitar, so he was teaching us, uh, like, songs, and then he got, like, other instruments that we were learning at home. So it was definitely music as far as, like, bands and instruments first, and then the DJing stuff, just kind of, like, you know, finding... It was tough back then. Finding I was on C, like on CDs, finding songs to to mix and uh, getting professional equipment. It was really tough. But back then, if you had the songs, you were good to go. So we had like some parties. We take like two Stacks stereos. Of CDs. No, we take two stereos, and then like you finish playing one song here, and you just turn the volume down on this one and turn the volume up on the other one. And then I remember the cool thing to do next was I had, so we have a mixer where you mix the songs, and I had two of these. Uh, remember the disc mans? Right. Yes. I had two disc mans, so like oh, play, and then so that's like. A little more compact. Then from there, sort of like went into professional equipment with like dual CD players. And what was that transition for you? Like, can what were you thinking? It was I'm I'm trying to see. Was there like a pivotal point where you go? I guess what well, you mentioned like, hey, I'm not getting invited to these parties. How do I find myself in there? Yeah, I didn't I didn't, I didn't see I didn't like I didn't was make it one that, way. Yeah, it wasn't like a decision, and I think nothing really was. Nothing was like, all right, what am I gonna do? Yo, DJ is gonna work, or yo, TV is gonna work. It was everything is really just for me. I don't think when I was in high school, I even went to college. You know, I studied computers. It wasn't like, hey, I'm not going to you know college because I'm gonna be doing DJing and you know. No, I went. I was gonna you know get a nine to five job like everyone else. Just was doing it part time, I got good at it, people liked it, so it, you know, it became uh, the life that I lived. I mean, today when we look at it, anywhere I go, you're playing. Mm. Like, I, I've either, I'm, you're either there. My, yeah, my, my brother was saying it. He goes, I've taken my kid to IMG World. You were going to play that, that evening. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I rarely go out when I'm in Dubai, but I, I went out and there you were. I don't think you were playing, but I met you at the elevator. Right, that right, was a right, random yeah, chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I walk into the elevator at an event, which I rarely go to. I was only there five minutes anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Catch the elevator, door shuts, hey, hey. Yeah, and then there's crazy, a bliss. Right? <laughs> Small world. Small elevator. A small elevator was. <laughs> I forgot what I wanted to ask. <clears throat> Today you're known, mm -hmm. right? And well, we're keeping all of this in. Yeah. Um, you're known as a DJ. They know who you are. You go to the hottest clubs. But you were fired at yeah. your, your first job. Yeah, yeah. So perhaps you can take us through that story. And then how did you develop yourself? Because there might be someone who's watching or who's listening to this and they're going, okay, what do I need to do to skill up yeah. as I mean, a DJ? I, I tell this uh, story pretty often. It was, uh, it was at a theme park called Wonderland, which they just, demo it's actually just down the road from here, where we're sitting right now. On Route 66, um, on that one. It's, you know, right, right before the Garhud Bridge, there's a park, the Creek Park, and yeah. right next to the Creek Park, yeah, there used to be a theme park there called Wonderland, and I got a, so it was like a summer job right after I finished school, and they wanted someone to DJ, and I, like I said, I had the music, I got there, when I got there, they had this professional equipment, I was like, oh my god, I've never used this before, so this is like, great, and they wanted me to like MC and host and all that, but when I got there, all I wanted to do was learn how to use this, I was just trying to learn how to mix songs now, because now I have the pitch control, I can slow songs down and speed things up, so I was like, mixing songs together, and they were like, yo, what, what happened to the MC? And what happened to all these games you're supposed to play with the kids? And what happened to this? And what happened to that? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll do it tomorrow. But I was not listening. I was literally like, really, this was like the pivotal point of me learning how to mix songs together. And I remember like one of the, and I would even, I would even do it like back to back sometimes. Like if I had a mix, 
Because, you know, in a DJ world, you don't play the same song twice. Right. But no, I was learning how to mix these two songs together. So I would just like play this, mix it together, and I play it again and mix it together. So like, and they were, they were probably noticing. And one of the songs I was mixing together was the Backstreet Boys and an NSYNC song. And it was like, oh my God, I fix it, figured out how to mix it exactly. God, it got so good. Yeah, it was so good. But I mean, they caught on to me. They pulled me into the office one day like, listen, you know, um, you're not really doing what we wanted you to do. And, you know, with the MC and this. You're doing and what you want to do. What they wanted me to do, yeah. <laughs> so they're like, you know, we got to terminate you. And I still have that, you know, I still have that termination, le the offer letter or the termination letter? Yeah, it was tough, you know. I, I, like, I, I, didn't, I, I remember I didn't tell my parents that I got fired. And I was like too embarrassed to tell anyone. Um, but there's nothing to be embarrassed no, about. No, not at all. Get fired from jobs all the time. Um, what did you do then to become where you are today? Like, if someone is watching this or listening to this and they're thinking, okay, I want to get good, whether it's, I guess it will be the same skill or perhaps the mindset applicable whether you're DJing or doing something else. But what did you do to get better, to get to this point today? No, I mean, I learned everything I needed to do over there. I mean, I, I really believe that if I didn't do what I did over there to get fired, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in this maybe position that I am today. Mm. So it was, it was an important uh, thing for me to do to get to where I am today. Um, and I mean, it was a real... I don't even have that like that much of a memory of it, but it's just a real brief moment which I remember thinking, oh, how am I going to tell my parents I got fired? And I'd still go down the same time I used to go to work, and I'd go to work every day. And I actually used to go back to the theme park. You just hang out and like uh, play over there because I still had a pass for a couple of uh, weeks, and then I stopped. I, and I was it was the summer of the year I graduated from high school, and then I was going to college, so it wasn't that big of a deal. So I started going to college, and then. I think in my first or second year, I got my first DJ job. Okay. You know, I was underage, I was under 21, so they can get me a license to perform there, but I couldn't leave the DJ booth or hang out in the club, which was uh, funny. Um, you are licensed in this box. Yeah, basically. Uh, well, we're always in a DJ box, so it's, right. not, it's, not a, it's not a big deal. And then when I, when I got that job, I remember, I mean, there was definitely, I'm, not, now I'm remembering, there was a lot going on between that and sort of getting my first job. I was renting out equipment and I was, uh, so I'd rent out the DJ equipment for if, I, if somebody booked me for a show and then I'd keep that equipment and I'd play all night on it. So I was learning a lot more about DJing uh, throughout this time. Um, and yeah. And what, was it smooth sailing? Because from the mm -hmm. outside, it just looks like, I mean, if I look at, I mean, just your intro alone. Yeah. But I've been following you for easily over a decade now. Mm -hmm. It just all seems from one side, which is if I'm just looking at you through social media or from just one side, it all seems like smooth sailing. Oh, I mean, no, no. Were there all. challenges? I mean, are you human like us? Yeah, you know, social media, like we never like, uh, no one ever picks up Instagram and says, hey, you're having a shit day, you know? <laughs> like, uh, it's all beautiful. Yeah. It's all bliss. Yeah. Yeah, no one really does that. And that's not really what you want to do. It's like, not dressing up to go to work one day. Like, I'm just gonna dress up like, you know, crap. You don't do that. Mm. You look good to go to work, you look good to go to a wedding, and that's just how part of life is. And I believe that the more you do that, the more you fall into a routine of, uh, uh, you know, being better, living positive. I mean, I, I for sure, I'm not for masking something. Yes. But I'm definitely for, uh, you know, positivity and, you know, ex excellence i'm sure if you stare in the mirror every day and tell yourself you're you're amazing eventually you're gonna start believing it right sure but the thing is it, i think um james cameron said it um it was a great quote I need, I need to get it can you bring it up please i think it says hope is not a strategy uh, luck isn't a factor oh my god this and is deep and fear isn't an option yeah because there are people who will actually just stand and look at a mirror and go Hope is not a strategy. That's what Luck I said. Is not a factor. Yes, sir. Is not an I did get it right. That's good. Um, and I, li I really like that quote because, again, from the outside, it could just seem it's either all easy or the kind of stuff where people stand by the mirror and just say good things. You get to a point where you believe it, like the law of attraction kind of stuff, but yeah. there's also an element of doing. Like, you can't just sit there and go, I hope for the best. Well, hoping for the best requires you to step out of the door, yeah. to go and knock on some doors, to face rejections, any of that happened for you a lot like how do you ne how did you get to where you are today like you've collabed with big yeah. big, big boys and girls and um, if someone wanted to know I want to get to this bliss status yeah how do I do it 
I mean, look, one thing is I'm, I have zero fear of failure. Mm. Zero. Like, I will try and do anything. Like, literally, I, I don't think there's a lot of people who are like that. They're concerned over their image and they're concerned over doing, uh, you know, something wrong or whatnot. And I don't have that at all. So mm. that, that helps. And for sure, I've failed many times, but I really believe, like, it's those failures that taught me how to do the next thing right. I mean, one example is a song I did with Cardinal. Like, people hated it, you know? Okay, <clears throat> interesting. Thought my piece on it was so bad. And it was bad, like, in hindsight, looking back at it, it was, did a terrible verse, but it was also my first song that I ever did. But if I didn't do that song, I wouldn't have got the next deal, the Chrysler deal, because when I walked into the Chrysler office and they're like, oh, we want you to be the new face of the, the car that has the Beats by Dre speakers on it, like, the presentation that they showed me on the screen was the Let It Go song. So... You know, the people who pulled me aside and they said, oh my God, you made a big mistake, your career's over. I was like, yo, where are that. they right now? Because for sure, if I didn't do that mistake, yes. I would have not been, I was sitting in a conference room that looked exactly like this. There's a big TV like that in here and they're like, we want to show you this presentation, boom. I press play and then suddenly it's the Let It Go song playing and they're like, they're showing pictures of me and it was, have you watched the movie The Entourage? Yes. The, the TV show? Yes. You know when uh, Vince is sitting in the room and they're like, Present it, present. Nice. it was basically, that was what was going on. So it just would not have happened. And I think people fail to see that. People like will create something. They'll create a podcast. They'll create a song. And they're like, oh my God, they got to polish it up. Yeah, oh man, I need to get this person on it. Oh, but what if people don't like you know, the way I look? What if the... For me, I just I really, I don't care. You know, this, I'm in this world for myself. I was born alone. I'm going to die alone. And, mm. you know, I really couldn't care really that much about what people think. For sure, I want to create content that will resonate with people. Mm. But, you know, first and foremost, like, it's about me and how I feel about it and the, the way I connect with it. I mean, and then there's people down the line which I care about, like family first, uh, my immediate family, my really close friends. And even, I'm talking about, like, even my close friends, I don't really have that much of a... It's not that important to me how they feel about you know what I do. I, you know their opinion matters. Sure. Like everyone else matters, but I'm 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 in it doing it for myself. Get inspired. One of the questions that I get frequently asked is, Kev, how can I increase my motivation? We see great individuals. We see achievers. Like many of the guests that I'm bringing on the show, they have the energy. They do so much. They're in a state of flow. How do they do it? Well, my team and I have released an article which I've made available on kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog, the ultimate biohacking guide to increasing motivation. Or you can simply Google Kevin increase motivation and the article should pop up right at the top. It's absolutely free. Read it and most important of all, take the bits and pieces that are relevant to you and apply it into your life to increase your motivation. I hope you find the article of value if you do, feel free to leave your comments and also share it with your circle of friends. Again, you can Google it, Kevin Increase Motivation. It will be the first link that pops up or on my website, kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog. So, you know, one thing I always tell like a lot of people is I have this uh, tunnel vision like horses. You know horses, they put on the, yeah, the blinders the blinders, so yeah. they don't see the other. And that's exactly how I am. So, you know... I'm, I'm, I know what I want to do and I just go for it and I do it and w whatever doesn't work, fails, uh, falls apart, comes back to bite me, it's just the, the risk I'm willing to take because it's those things that's really got me to where I am today. I can't be perfect. That's true. And I don't see it. Honestly, like, and this is no disrespect to anyone else, but I don't really see anyone uh, delivering on that side of... Uh, um, Especially mainly like the talent side, the performance side, mm. the you know the the results side. Not just how many followers you have on Instagram or how many ads you get from a brand because you know you. If if they close Instagram tomorrow, what are you what are you gonna do? That's true. Do you I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna DJ. Yes. I'm going to do radio. I'm going to do TV. I can do any of those things, right? I can, I can go into business. I have my own business. I know what, exactly what I'm going to do. So ask yourself that question. If they close social media tomorrow, what are you going to do? Mm, right? Are you going to print flyers one. with your pictures on it and, you know, uh, and get people to like, like a, a picture? Like, yo, can you like this picture for yeah, me? A thumb up. Yeah. There's nothing there, right? That's true. What you said was really interesting in terms of, you know, having the blinders and 
and just going for it, <laughs> knowing, knowing what you know, yeah. or you know, knowing what you want to do. Yeah. There are a lot of people, and perhaps even including myself or many other people, at some stage in our lives, we're lost. Yeah. Did you ever experience that feeling? Like, how did you know, like, this is it, I need to make music, or this is it, I want to mix? Um, was, was there a feeling that you go, yeah, I yeah. need to pursue this feeling? Yeah, def it's definitely, definitely it was a feeling, because I never thought, like, I'm going to DJ, and then after DJing, I'm going to do radio, and then after radio, I'm going to do TV. It was just, I mean, it just, it just really just happened. And even with the music thing, it, it's a natural progression for me, right? Any DJ sure. who's not producing music, it's just, it's just a DJ. There's some great DJs around the world, like uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff, you know, Kid Capri. Um, there's a lot of great DJs, sure. but they're not DJ Khaled. They're not DJ Snake because they're not producing records. Sure. So you can stay, uh, or even like DJ, you know, DMC, Scratch, DJ Craze, and Qbert and all these guys, great DJs, but they just, they're just DJs. Mm. And well, that's not what it was I want. a natural progression. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I want to go on to bigger stages. I want to do festivals and I want to do concerts. And it's just, that's the natural progression for it. The question I have, and a lot of people will have when they're watching this or listening to this, so let's say someone wants to get into the industry and get to bliss level. Yeah. How do you do it? Like, how do you find yourself at the F1? How do you find yourself at, um, you know, being the, well, you know, one of the faces for the iconic launch of Dubai 2020 Expo? Yeah. How do you find yourself in all these places? Like, what did you have to do? You, um, you gotta be, to get to this point. You got to be really consistent with uh, your goal. So mm -hmm. you, you got to really figure out what you want to do first. And then can, I always tell people the two important things, consistency and, uh, and I forgot the second one. Fair enough. <laughs> no. uh, but the thing is, it's easy to say consistency. But yeah. what does it mean? Like, I want to know, like, what steps would you take? Like, say I'm, I'm at the beginning of my career. The yeah. advice you could, if you could give yourself today the yeah. advice when you started out and go, okay, here are the things that just, it's just you hitting the wall, yeah. and here are the things you need to do. Is it phone calls? Is it emailing? Is it going up and getting a PR agency? Like, what steps does one have to do to get to this? I mean, you, you kind of mentioned them, so, some of them, uh, networking for sure, but okay. I had always had a great team who helped me with it, luckily. Um, but I'm realizing more and more that it's really you who's gotta be involved. And I'm actually now, after a very long time, Yes. I actually start getting more involved with like, because uh, people feel a certain way, right? So if I told you, hey, just speak to my manager about this thing, and and really the only reason why I do that because I got I had so much going on and I always have, you know, with my businesses, I got the family and all that. So, but I realized that it's Dubai is basically, or the whole world is about relationships. Yes, you have to build relationships, yes. right? So that is one thing, and then you got to be good too. There's got to be talent over here for you to sell. Sure, you can't just be uh, you want to be a talk. DJ and then yeah, you know, and talk your way into doing things. There's got to be some kind of talent. So what's what what I say about being consistent is that you have to consistently be good at what you're doing. Mm. I don't. If, I, they could have an empty club one night. I don't go in there and be like, oh, this sucks. You know, I'm just gonna. No, they might be someone. They don't care if the club's empty. They paid to get in there, so you have to be, you know, pretty entertain that one. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, like uh, e the stuff you mentioned about emails and phone calls. Yeah, you gotta reach out. There could be like, imagine there was ten doors over here, sure. right? And behind one of these doors, there was like a million dollars. What mm -hmm. would you do? I'd knock on every single one, but exactly. So why don't we do that in real life? Mm. Why do we not do that, right? You know that if you called 10 brands today, one of them might say, yo, here's some money for your podcast, sure. right? Just put my cup right there, back there, and here's uh, 500 dirhams. Right. You don't think that's possible? Sure, absolutely. It is possible. But absolutely. have you called 10 people? I haven't. We, that's just human nature. That's how we are. Right. And I'm figuring this out now. You know what I mean? Mm. And this is not something I've always done. I was always just more like, all right, I'm gonna. This is me. This is my talent. You've seen what I do. All right, now that you gotta come to me. I was mm. on radio. I left radio and I stayed consistent. People don't do that. Mm. I left TV. I stayed consistent. You know, I'm not on any form of like traditional media right now, but That's I right. still managed to. Uh, you know, my career. I always felt like was going there. I'd like it to be like that, but it was never going down. If I ever do feel like it's going down, I don't wait till I. I don't wait till I see this. No, I'm like going like that. If I see that, I'm like, all right, 
What do we do? Let's change it around. And, and what is it that you do? Is it creating content? What I just said, yeah. Like Knock on media? more doors, yeah. uh, put a plan together, you know, uh, meet with my team. I need to be in my own space as well. So mm. I need, you know, quiet time. Okay. I need to just be in my own thoughts. Uh, and, and, I, and I figure a lot of things out myself. So, I mean, it's hard to believe, but I really am more of an introvert than an extrovert. Oh, no, I see it. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm like, I want to be invited to the party, but I don't want to go to the party. This is really the way I am. So in my own thoughts, in my own space is where I'm, I kind of get a lot of the big answers that I'm looking for. How do you make time for that? Because this is important. Mm -hmm. And I've realized that when I'm speaking and I'm working with a lot of successful folks, yeah. they all make time for it. They call it meditation. Yeah. They call it time out. They call it two hours early in the morning when the family's not awake yet. Yeah. Everyone refers to it differently, but that's the essence of it is they get time for themselves to go through their thoughts. Yeah. How do you find the space or how do you create that space? Same Especially when you have so much going on. Yeah, same thing. Sometimes through meditation. Um, I listen to a lot of, uh, you know, really good audio pieces. Okay. And when I listen to those audio pieces, my mind tends to drift anyways. When I read books, I can't read books for anything because mm -hmm. my mind just goes. So when I do want to get into that space, I read a book to just kind of like, I want to disconnect from what I'm doing like here. I want to mm -hmm. tap into the subconscious and the uh, super subconscious mind. And then, you know, it's a terrible world we live in right now with social media. You're watching a lot of people's live on Instagram. I try to avoid that in the morning. I try to avoid that at night. So I don't want to go to sleep thinking about other people's lives. And I don't want to wake up uh, seeing anyone's uh, lives either. So I avoid those two spots. And really just wherever I can, um, you know, I'm trying to cut down on TV as well. That's one of like... What, what do you listen to? In the car? Yeah, what, like what puts you in, in that space? In, in a good oh, zone? Si I mean, mostly silence. Okay. Or if I'm watching nice. TV, I'll watch shows that I've watched already, so I don't need to really concentrate so much on it. Because you don't want to, like if I sit, there, sit around on a sofa and just start going to the thought, I'll fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm re that relaxed, I'll fall asleep. But if I put on like a show that I've watched already or a movie that I've watched already or something I'm not really interested on in really watching, so that will really help me. That's that white noise. Yeah, you know, it's just going on, but I, I, you know, I can, I can, I can have thoughts over here. Mm. But concentration is really hard for me. It's really hard for me to concentrate. That's why it's hard for me to read a book. That's why right. it's hard for me to watch. Sometimes I have this fear of going to a movie and watching a movie and not, you know, like my mind just drift off and I don't understand what's going on. And yeah. I do that all the time. I tell my wife, like, oh, yo, what happened? She's like, yo, you're, we're just watching right now. So I like watching uh, stuff at home. But yeah, I watch. I like watching. Uh, I watch a lot of TV shows too. I still do, but mm. I think you gotta, cut, you gotta cut down on TV. Yeah. The thing is, we've always, you know, we've said this, or it's been a thing of success of you gotta cut down on TV. Yet I find, like social media, if you're able to turn it to your advantage and set it up, like set clear parameters, yeah, it can actually be useful. Like for me, when I watch certain TV shows, I get a lot more than just watching a TV show. I get to relax. It helps me with my creativity. I get to learn maybe something out of it. Like I'm watching a TV show with quite a few things. You must be watching good shows then. Yeah, like Suits or <laughs> White Collar. I'm thinking, oh, this is excellent. I'll never be able to pull it off. But I love the element of how, you know, you just, you know, the style or that charisma that yeah. they had. No, those are good shows. I mean, I watch some terrible shows. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, but you're right. Balance is everything, right? Yeah. You want just time to... If you get what you need to get done, then you don't need to be spending time, you know, thinking. So I try to like not work in the evening as much as I can now. Um, so when I do watch TV, I don't feel like I need to be doing anything else. Right. You have a lot going on. How do you balance your time? So I have a good team. That's one. Did you create this team? Were yeah. you born with the team? Did you create it? Like, I wish. What was the process? No, definitely I'm always on the lookout for members to join the team. Um, I don't like changing team members often because I kind of like... It's a family for me and it's a lot of personal things because it's, it's, it's a weird situation because I'm the CEO of this company that, so then these are my staff, but these staff manage me. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes, absolutely. So I gotta, you know, it's, it's, a real, it's a real weird situation. So I gotta talk to them about managing the artist who is me. So it's a really weird circle, but it works. And I have a bunch of, a really good team around me right now. I mean, for sure, yeah, there's a couple of times where you know, there's been people who come into your team where it didn't work out or it was not the right situation. But again, trial and error, same thing. Sure. Most of the time, it's good people. I have, you know, like uh, people in my DJ circle, like one of the guys who DJs with me, Mr. Chef Codes, he's been DJing with me for 11 years now. You okay. know what I mean? So that, those are the kind of relationships I like, you know, longevity and, uh, and just trust. And, you know, especially in this industry that we're in, like the entertainment industry is really, it's a dark and... <laughs> Terrible industry. 
What 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 are you looking for in in the kind of people that you have in your in your circle? Like the ones that work. What would you say? Are you looking for certain values? Are you looking for certain characteristics? Certain yeah. skills? I'm looking for honesty. That's the first and foremost thing. Then I'm looking for someone with dedication. You know, I need someone to be dedicated to the cause. How do you spot it? Because everyone will talk. You know, imagine you're hiring and I walk in with a resume and I go, I can do it all. I will do it all. I and then I'm just talking a whole lot of crap. Yeah, I mean, look, at the at the point I am in my life, I'm a very, very good judge of character. Like, okay. I kind of can scope it all out. Mm. You know, when I meet someone, I can figure a lot of things out. So that, that helps. Before, yeah, for sure, there was people who were like that. I mean, there's people who've been great, but you know, we had this kind of conflict of, you know, sort of great people, not good at work. Great work, not good people. Mm. Just balance, you know? We just don't, we don't make the decision to, to be honest about the situation. We always have that, you know, you have that one friend who's just, you know that person's not a good person, but you're like, oh, you know, whatever, it's just Mike. You know, Mike's like that. Mm. No, you don't, need to, you don't need to have that person around you. It's very simple. We don't make that decision because we're like, we just keep giving That's people chances, yeah. right? Do you mix, you know, family or friends with with work, or do you just keep yeah. work separately? Yeah, no, it's How completely do do open. That? Okay, um, completely open. You know, so you're not you're okay with having the uncomfortable conversations if it if it comes to it. Like, listen, you're great at being a cousin. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're just great cousins. It's not going to work um, in this position. If I if I need to. Oh, you mean family at work? Yes. <clears throat> because for some people it works, and for others it doesn't. Yeah. I no. I'm not a big believer of that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, only because I'll, I'll treat everyone the same, and mm. I think sometimes family expect to be treated different. Sure. And it's it's hard. You know, I've I've, I've gotten to business some a small dab into business with some like of my brothers once. Um, and it's tough, you know, too many chefs in the kitchen type of situation. Um, my wife always wants to get into business with me, but I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm more of a one-man show. Okay. I feel like, you know, I, I need to be at the realm. At the of, helm. Yeah, at the helm, sorry. Yeah. Of, uh, the helm of the realm. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's a good one. Um, it's just easier. I know what I want. I know what I want to do. I know. I know the diff. I know exactly what excellence is. I know what you know good is. I know what bad is. I don't really see the. How do you define that? Like, how, what's excellence to you? And because in whatever you do, you seem to be pretty good at it. Yeah. I mean, we. And all, it, I it involves we, a lot of work. I think we all know what excellence is. I don't think there's anyone who doesn't know. It's maybe whether they're level, willing to play with yeah, it. Yeah, maybe our level is different, but we all pretty much know, right? You know, like I, I ask this me, question. Yeah. I ask this question because today we live in a social media world, and one of the challenges I see, it's not when I'm, when I'm working with clients. As a public speaking coach, I've been working with CEOs. Mm -hmm. And in the last 15 years, it's gone from, say, 50 and 60-year-olds who were CEOs of companies to today CEOs who are running multi-billion dollar companies, and they're in their 30s. Yeah. And we're dealing with public speaking, which is important because it's about you know, who they are, how they're representing their brand. Yeah. A big challenge, especially in the Middle East, especially in the social media age, is this overconfidence. Mm -hmm. And so that makes me wonder, do they actually know what excellence means? Because they think that only because I can speak or I have the confidence to blab, yeah. I'm good. Doesn't make it true. Um, I don't know. I mean, my thought on that is basically it's social, social, the social media world, right? That's what's influenced uh, that kind of behavior. Mm. You can uh, put on some makeup, look good, and and then suddenly you're a model. You're, you're a model, yeah. Don't forget the ass shot. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag twerk. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think so, so, social media plays a role, but so how, like so what's excellence for you? Like how do you know? Okay, I'm doing the job at a good level, at, mm. at an excellent level, or this is this is what it means to be doing it at an excellent level. Whether it's a DJ, yeah. or you know, you're the owner of a barber shop. Yeah. You've got celebs coming to a barber shop. I mean, I think it's pretty simple in terms of uh, re result oriented, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. So if you know, if you're doing a really good job at a night, the club is full, people are spending, having a good time. All of these, I think, are little things that equate into excellence. In a barber shop, obviously, good sales, good reviews, um, customers coming, satisfaction. You're providing excellent service. You know. I mean, for me to explain it to you perfectly, like which one do you think is excellence, economy or business or first class out of the three? Which one would you call excellence? Say that 
<laughs> economy class, business class, or first class? I want the whole private jet. Yeah, but I'm saying like out of those three, what okay. is... You can have excellence in each category, right? Yeah, but I'm saying if they put those three in front of you, right? You sure. saw which one, which I'd one... I'd go to first class, yeah. So as humans, we absolutely know yes. what excellence is. Right. But there's no... I can't tell you the definition of excellence. Uh, like if you told me, yo, is this table excellence? Like it doesn't apply to this sure. situation over here. Is this hotel like excellent? Do you know or is it defined excellence? Yeah, it's a great hotel, For but what if you took doing, me to yeah. Burj Al Arab, now, That's yo, different. no, that is excellence. Sure. You know what I mean? Is it the guy, the driver of your Uber who's like got a tie on, shirt, smells nice, driving, says, hello, sir, how are you? Yeah. Whether the guy's got one hand on this. We all know the definition of excellence. It just doesn't have a definition. But it's a, yeah. it's a feeling that we are all very much aware of. Mm. I can put two things, in, two different things in front of you always and... I think 99% of the time, you can figure out the difference between excellence and you know what's not. And again, sure. right, the other one, may, I'm not putting anything else down, but it's just the epitome of something being amazing, yes. bliss, yes. and then there is just regular degular. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned Uber because I was just recently in, in Portugal, yeah. and one of the things that stood out for me was, was the Uber drivers. Yeah. I'm like, I thought you were going to drop a, speaking of Uber, you got 30% off, right? <laughs> that would have been a good one. <laughs> Uber, if you want to sponsor it, then we can talk about it. Um, but man, the driver, the drivers of, yeah. of the, of the Uber in Portugal, man, they look, they look like male models. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Looking good. Exactly like that. A white shirt, tie, like dressed so well. I'm like, you dressed better than me, buddy. That's crazy. And, and to me, I was like, this is excellent. Like, it, that actually came through my mind. I was like, wow, this is like next level Uber. Yeah. This is fantastic. I mean, there are countries where the Uber are like fancy cars and stuff. The cars weren't fancy, but they like took pride in what they were doing. Like there was just a certain level. I'm like every single Uber driver. Five star everyone, huh? Yeah. I was like, wow, this is <laughs> awesome. And you brought up Bliss. Yeah. How did you come up with the name? Uh, total coincidence, man. I was I printed my business card, the design, and then everything was written down except for the DJ name. <laughs> it was the only thing I didn't have, and I heard it in like a in a couple of songs, and I was always thinking like, I researched the meaning. I'm like, man, it's like it was extreme form of happiness. I'm like, it's pretty cool, but did it come back because someone was saying it? No, I heard it in, in a song. Okay. One, one was an LL Cool J song. And the other one was a, it used to be a group called PM Don. They used to have a song called Set Adrift on Memory Bliss. Okay. Uh, he'll probably know it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I heard it and I was like, well, what does this word mean? And it's like, you know, highest form of happiness. I was That's like, right. that's cool. I mean, look, at the time, it didn't really connect with me. Years later, I'm like, whoa, this is, this is, the, this is like perfect. Like, it's how I want to feel. It's how, how I want people to feel yeah. when they're watching me. It's like, this is, this is where we are, right? The highest form of happiness. So I picked it at that time, but really made sense to me much. You've later. grown into it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a great name, because I was thinking, man, that is excellent name. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how he got it. Yeah. yeah. I was a little concerned at the beginning, because it was a little girly, and there was a magazine, someone was telling me there's like a girl magazine called Bliss, but you can make whatever you want out of anything these days. Mm. It's, it's not, there's no rules, you create the rules, you know? Again, just, you gotta stop listening to people. That's true. People, you know, uh, like the advice you, you get from people could be some of the worst things that you, you can hear. It's not, it's not good. Bliss, how do you go about selecting who do you listen to? Like, who do you choose in your, to have it in your like, circle of influence? Yeah. Like, you know, soundboards? I, how I, do you pick and choose? I mean, I, I don't want to hear a lot of opinions, that's for sure. Okay. But, so you're stubborn. Like no, my thought, I just go with it. No, no, it's not like that. I, I don't want to. I don't want people. I don't want to take until I've kind of like decided what I want to do. So let's say I want to put out this book, right? right? I don't want to get influenced while I'm creating the book. After I've created the book, I'm happy to hear what some people have to say. Um, but again, I'm not. I don't want to engage in conversation. Yes, no. I want to hear it, hear it, hear it, and I want to go back again to me and sort of like. Uh, figure it out myself. I, mm. I feel like the answer is within you. Yes. I don't think anyone else has the answer for you. There's a lot of sampling music, right? 
Yeah, and pretty you, similar. You hear, you hear, but you need to step away from it. Yeah. Yeah, this girl came up to me at a party recently, and she was like, uh, and her friend introduced me. Her friend was a super fan, like, oh my god, I watch your vlogs, and I, do, I, I used to watch your TV show. And he tells his girl, he's like, yo, this is the guy. He's like, she's like, yo, who are you? And I'm like, oh, DJ Bliss. Like, oh my god, you're DJ Bliss? Y yeah, come watch you. You know, you're great sometimes, but sometimes you're not great. Like, and I'm like, did I ask for your opinion? No, it's not about. But that is literally the definition of everything, right? Like a day, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. A meal, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. A person you meet, sometimes it's great. So like, there was really no need for that situation. And I don't know what that whole thing was about. Was she nervous and was she not in her mind? Or, but that's the kind of situation I'm talking about. Mm. There's no need for, there was no need for it. Mm. And most of the time, I don't think there's a need for it. Unless I engage in a conversation with you like, yo, hey, listen, what do you think about this book? Yeah. You're like, all right, let me read it. Uh, yeah, you know, I think it's too long. You might give me some opinion, which it might it might work for me, so I'll listen to it, but I don't want it to be, like, enforced, so I would never come to you while I was writing the book. Right. Because that piece needs to come from me. It's really interesting you say this, because what I notice, and this is over thousands of people across five continents, I've noticed a lot of people at the idea stage, they're always seeking advice to either solidify it, hoping that they will solidify their thoughts. Well, yeah. what actually happens is often it get, they backfire into not starting it yeah. because of all everyone's opinions. I mean, they might be looking for, uh, I don't know. I don't know what they could be looking for. They could be looking for just like uh, assurance or... You know, that boost of confidence. Yeah, of, like, I don't know, like, you know, the, appro the approval. Right. And then when you don't get it, it's the worst feeling. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if you came to me with this idea and I'm like, if I, or if I came to you with this idea, I'm like, yo, listen, I've got this great idea. We're gonna take these cups and we're gonna, uh, you know, put this thing around it. It's gonna say this and then, you know, and you're like, yeah, that's cool. It would like kill, kill my, me. but you know, I, I don't, that's why I try to avoid that whole situation over there. And your thing is, I have an idea, let me launch it and I'll just see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Or if I do feel like I'm stuck, I'll ask for an opinion or something, but. Usually, I, I try to avoid it. Can you share with me a time when you made a decision and it was the wrong decision? And then how did you pivot to be, be able to progress forward? Because again, from the outside, it all seems like you can't get it wrong. Yeah, no, I mean, I told you earlier about the song. I mean, that first, my first song is a classic example of... But that was something you created. It was a project that came to a completion. Yeah. And then maybe now that you look back at it and you go, well, oh, yeah, it wasn't really my best song. Yeah. But there are times where, say, for example, we're starting a project and we might, we might have a series of decisions we need to make. Yeah. And then you realize, okay, I need to make a decision and I'll hire 10 people, for example. Uh -huh. Then you realize, okay, oh, we don't even have a market because we miscalculated the whole thing and we need to pivot. Yeah. Or we go from selling chocolate bars to selling laptops. Have you had any of those kind of decisions? So you never got to the end of it to reflect. Yeah. You had to go, okay, this is wrong. We have to cut it off. It's a bad relationship. We have to cut it off. I don't know. I'm, the, the, the language you're talking is not very my industry. Okay. So I don't really uh, connect with, uh, you know, with, with, with the terms. I'm not, no, I don't really. Just even in your personal life. Yeah. I mean, for sure, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now because I, I try not to attach to thoughts of, you know, uh, not working or failure or anything like that. That part. It, it really interests me because I can see it. That none of it seems to even register in your in I'm your going mind. Going like I'm trying to go. It's in not. It's, yeah, it's like yeah. I don't have this in my vocabulary. Yeah. It, it, it's really obvious. Like you're just. Yeah. This I, is I, how I flow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, in my thoughts too, I try not to. Try not to like sort of dab in, you know, regret, failure, change. Love all those experiences that I went to. Yes. Really, truly grateful for all of it. But I'm like moving on and not really seeing. Unless, you know, like I, that, that, that song thing I'm telling you about. Yeah, it definitely resonates with me because it was such a great, the, the best mistake, you know? So that's why I often tell that story. It's still with me because it was like literally I'm like, man. People told me like your career is over. Literally, one somebody I knew from the industry sat me in a car. He's like, "Yo, let me help you out. Because <laughs> I feel like you really made a mistake. Let me get somebody to write songs for you." And I was like, "It's really not that serious." Um, and it wasn't. And that person's not even around the industry anymore either. It's a mm. Funny story. Um, but yeah, who have you learned from in terms of 
leaders. They could be our parents. It could be friends. It could be people we don't know yeah. from YouTube or even podcasts. Who are people whom you've learned lessons from that you've applied in your life? Could be in the same industry or different industries. Literally everyone. Like literally, I, I, to tell you that I have like this one person, like I don't, but I could learn something from you guys here today on what you're doing. I could learn something from listening to someone's podcast. I can learn from someone on TV. I can learn from my brother. I can learn from my dad. And I, it's literally, I'm literally like a magnet mm. <laughs> for, for learning. You know, like I'll be super interested on how you guys are putting this podcast together, how you record. Like I was literally watching the microphones earlier. I'm like, oh, you got the microphone set up like this and it's connected to that. All right. And that's the camera and how, you know, the place is set up. But how do they get this place? And, you know, like I'm learn. I'm literally like that's that's really. really so you do a lot of your learning by observing. Yeah. Because yeah. there are different sorts, you know, some yeah. observe, some do. Because I'm, self, I'm also self-taught in everything. Radio, TV, DJ. Yes. Yeah. Self-taught in all of them. Like learned everything myself didn't go to school for any of those things or have somebody who, who taught me. And this is pre-internet days, like, was the internet around, like, how to be a TV host? Like, how did you no. learn it? Or you just go and go, I'm going to no, figure I was it doing, out? No, I was doing radio already, so mm. it, was, uh, it was easy, but definitely not, no. There's no uh, how to... Uh, not as frequent as what it is today. I mean, now you just literally rock up to Google. Literally, yeah. How to. Yeah, literally, no. Definitely none of that. But I was doing radio, and even though it's not a, it's not a straight progression, it was it was easier because I was I was talking, and then I was uh, on TV talking again. But the camera was on, so I had to pay a little bit more attention to what was going on. Mm. What did you learn from that experience? Because it would have been different. What from radio, where you're just using your voice, to then TV, and now it's hey, I got my face. I had to start everything. Looking, I started looking good and lose weight. That's, <laughs> that's literally what I had to do. I was like 105 kilos. When you started? When I started, okay. yeah. And I was like, yeah, I can't look like this on TV. Because TV makes you look even bigger. That's right, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I had to lose some weight. <laughs> that was really it. And then, you know, facial expression as well. Because before you can, like, uh, in, in radio, you talk with your mouth really open to get the words out. But right. you couldn't talk like that on TV because it, it would look really weird. Um, so you had to find that balance. And I was, I did a couple of live shows as well. And there was no room for mistake. Even though radio was live, but kind of... You had your own space to hide things. So if you know if I was co-hosting, I would be like talking, and I'd be like, you know, press the getting a message, yeah, across. Couldn't do that. So yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty cool cat. Uh, yeah, cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was always. <laughs> You're. I think anyone that looks at you, or within a few minutes of just you know sitting with you, realizes that you're a leader. What What's your first memory of you know that kind of leadership quality? Do you remember, like, were you a kid and do you remember the first time you exhibited leadership qualities, at least that's memorable for you? I mean, I remember I used to work a lot with my dad in the summers of uh, high school. Mm -hmm. I used to watch what he used to do and he was like, uh, you know, in a position of leadership with his staff and his company and I was around over there. and uh, Just hanging out? Yeah, you know, he had an old school big table and, and people would come into his office to sign checks and, you know. And he was just like, I loved it. Like, you know, like they put a stack of papers in front of me and just sign it. Like, just throw that paper away, just sign and it. And the feeling. Sorry, I lost the book. But he would like just sign it and just throw it. I was like, man, this guy is so cool. Yeah, he would just sign like, uh, they'd bring him like the bills, the phone bills, and he was just like, he was just signing and putting it away. And I was like, oh man. Boss. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, I never, yeah, I, I, this is the first time I'm really tapping into this thing over here because I do something pretty similar in my work where I, if I'm signing like checks, I have a signature and I'm signing bills and stuff, I'm like, I have another signature. And my dad used to do that. He used to do that like, the signature just to get out of here. And this was like his main signature. You could, <laughs> could not copy that signature at all. <laughs> but yeah, probably. And I used to work, he used to own like a toy shop. I used to work in a toy shop as well. And I used to work in his office too. Um, so I, I, yeah, I learned a lot of business from, from that side. What, what, what would you say is a single trait you took from him as something that you can see visibly in your life? Um, believe it or not, a lot of things that uh, you shouldn't do in business is what okay. I learned from him because I caught my dad at a place where he was like super past the, the hustle stage. It was like, I've already achieved success. So he wasn't really doing much. So I was just like, you know, why isn't he coming to work early? Or why isn't he like, you know, harder on these guys with what, you know, what's going on? Why does he not go to the shops more regularly? But this was like my dad post hustle. Cause sure. he was like hustling hard to get to where he was. 
he was literally working in a bank and then you know a teller of a bank then became the manager of the bank and then the manager of the whole thing and then opened a shop on the side and then from that went into like you know the big toy business that he was doing so like i said when i caught him it was like sort of like you know the success he made it. yeah so it was a lot of a lot of those things but you know those those characteristics were were definitely uh uh, so I don't, I don't. I mean, so many things. I mean, I learned a lot of things to do and not do from everyone, especially sure. you know our our parents. You know, they're like our, um, you know, they gave birth to us. That's you know our first love, uh, and as much as you want to be exactly like them, for sure, there's a lot of things that you don't want to be sure. like too. And I think it's important that you learn that. But that's part of evolving. Yeah, not for everyone. You know, some people might just want to be. I want to be exactly like my dad or my mm. mom, and it's not always the right thing uh, to do. I think you got to really look at it and be like, all right, what are the great characteristics to take? But also, listen, what are the ones that are really not uh, not good? Not for any bad reason, you know? Just needs to suit your personality and what yeah. you want to do. Yeah. And that's, that goes for everything. Like I said, I think as a human being, you know, we have, our brain is capable of right from wrong, good from bad, but we just, Sometimes we just do, you know, bad things. It's not like, you know, the girl you dated and, you know, she, you knew she was bad for you, but you still dated her, you know? <laughs> like, you yeah. just kept, kept waiting when you should have cut that off until you waited till like, this, the whole thing went to... Crumble. Not that I know what that means. Uh, people tell me. <laughs> <laughs> until it crumbled. <laughs> no, but literally, yeah, that's the... Do you want some water? Thank you, man. You gotta drink a lot of water. Especially when you're doing this podcast. Man, it takes it out of you. It's like uh, dehydrating my throat. I haven't talked this much since radio. <laughs> Speaking of that, you've created a lot of content. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing, this was I think a year, of, well, some time ago, um, you, you, even, you, had done, you were doing interviews and you had done one with Muhammad Al-Habtur. Yeah. You still do that? It was, uh, was it was it a phase? It was, a day, it was the days of uh, my vlogs, actually, that okay. I was doing that. And funny enough, I've just started vlogging again. Okay. Yeah, that's why we're like, <laughs> yeah. I'm literally, literally, we're like, all right, we're back on it. But I was doing it daily first, then I was doing it every three days. And then I realized, you know what? Again, same thing. Like, who created these rules? Why does it have to be a vlog? Why does it have to be this many minutes? Why does it have to be on a certain day of the week? So we're like, we just, I'm filming like whenever I, I'm out doing things, showing people what I'm doing. And I kind of like put it all together to. Uh, on your time frame. Yeah. Yeah. It's just easier for me and. Uh, I think people will appreciate it more too. From that interview, what would have been the best advice you received or that you, you took away from the time you spent with Muhammad? It was actually a lot of stuff uh, about him and working for his dad and his dad wouldn't uh, do him any favors and he had to work like literally from the bottom up in the hotels and uh, um, and you know he, he would make him wake up in the morning and not skip work and stuff like that. So it was, that, that was pretty cool to hear. And he's got, he's got so much respect for his dad. I know until today they wake up on a Saturday morning, and they go visit all their properties, and they you know they do a walkthrough. And uh, yeah, he's um, man, that guy is like super athletic, business minded, like travels the world, mm. and yeah, he's he's definitely got a great head on him for sure. Was Loves there? horses as well. Yes, he's, he's a polo player. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, is there a lesson that you've learned recently that you, you told yourself, okay, this is important. I'm not sure why I didn't learn this earlier or it didn't click with me earlier, but now we have to implement this, whether it's in business or in life. Yeah. Have you had any of those? Like, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's so simple. I mean, practice, practicing and, you know, what I was telling you earlier about being consistent, I think is so important. Like, you know, these basketball players, like, mm -hmm. even the best of the best, Michael Jordan, LeBron, or Kobe, they practice like more than any anybody absolutely and you think why would they need to practice they're the best but that is the reason why they are the best um lebron james came off the came off winning the title and while everyone else i think was popping bottles of champagne goes and does four hours something like that yeah yeah, yeah. he's he, that's yeah. just how but he i'm is. sure this is the work ethic of also michael jordan or steph curry or all the time yeah i think michael yeah. jordan is one of the the hardest you he, he, he would work super hard you gotta be like that. They say they say stories about a pilot. You know, a pilot reads a book every time they, they they don't just say, "Hey, I know this button." They do a check. No, they put out a book and they're like, "All right, you know." They cross check. No matter how much you fly, you could forget. So if you don't do what you're doing every day, uh, consistently, 
And what's the other word, Ridge? What we used to say on the vlog? Consistent, consistence and persistence. That's it. Thank you, Ridge. So you gotta be consistent about what you're doing, but yeah. you also have to be persistent, yes. right? I can do the same thing. I could do this podcast every day. Right. But if I don't have people to ha on this podcast, it doesn't make no sense. Sure. And if I'm just reaching out to 10 people, remember the story about the door, right? Yeah. Not, if you don't knock on those doors, you're not gonna know what's behind those doors. Mm. Um, so I feel like you gotta be really persistent about what you wanna do. You know, I wanna do this podcast and I wanna do it you know, to this level, so you gotta push to see what you're gonna do. Um, and I think it's super important to, to have that mentality. We live in a world that as well as the good advice and the things that we learn, there's also a lot of bad advice that's out there. Mm -hmm. What's a bad advice you were given or that was voiced through an opinion to you? I don't know, I can't remember when, but I do know that one of the worst advice you could give someone is be yourself, because that's really like one of the worst advice that you could, it's probably... A, it's, <laughs> I, yeah, I that's it. quite frequent. <clears throat> yeah, it, it could be what are the worst pieces of advice that anyone could ever give you, right? Just Why be do you say that? Because if you, if, you met, if, I, if you met someone, or if I met someone, and you could tell this person's got some bad characteristics, bad traits and all that, you wouldn't, why would you go tell that person to go be yourself? Just be honest, be like, yo, you go and you you know, do issues, this, buddy. this, and this, and this. Yeah. You know, we had a conversation off camera earlier, you know, yes. what we spoke about. I didn't say, hey, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. I gave you sort of my piece on what I thought. Sure. And now it's up to you to do what you want to do. Yes, true. Then that's, that's exactly the same thing. It's a tricky one because none of your business, right, to really uh, point something out at someone. But at least be honest and don't tell that person to be themselves. Mm. Just either don't say anything or just be honest mm. about, you know, what that situation is. And I think that is that that is probably one of the worst advices that you can give someone. What was the worst advice given to me? I don't know, man. You you, you notice every time you ask me these questions about like anything um, that's not music related. No, not not music, but when it's it's anything like it's not positive, ex, you know, uh, progressive moving forward. Yes. It's just not. It just doesn't stay with me. Well, then let's let's go. <clears throat> What's been the most progressive advice you received? that really helped you propel? Um. Get inspired. Imagine if you could present yourself, your thoughts and your ideas with clarity and confidence. Imagine if you could speak to influence and impact. Imagine if you could communicate like a commanding and charismatic leader. Well, you can, given the right information, and the investment of effort from your end. How do I know that? As a public speaking coach, I work with CEOs, world leaders, and presidents. And when they hire me, they expect nothing short of results. And over the years, it's been two decades now, two challenges have risen for me being unable to help the majority of people. I'm usually on a plane, with the majority of my time being booked a good year or two in advance. And my one-on-one -on -one session to work with someone in person generally starts at $20,000. So we solved the problem by making my public speaking course available for you online. Everything that I teach my clients when I'm working one-on-one, -on -one, thoughts, tips, strategies, how to do things, all on video, all sequenced in the right order for you to be able to watch, re-watch, practice, and refine your presentation, your speaking, and your overall communication skills. And guess what? You will get results. Now, you can have this course, not for the $20,000 that my clients pay me when we work one-on-one. -on -one. You can have it for $9.97. That's right, just $9.97. You might be thinking, well, why are you offering something that you charge $20,000 for, for $9.97? It's simple because those who want to work with me one-on-one -on -one will still hire me. But for many whom I might be out of their budget, this is a great way to develop their communication skills, to cut through the noise, to rise above the rest, and to beat their competition. If you're serious about wanting to develop your skills to be able to present your thoughts, your ideas, and yourself with clarity and confidence, to be able to speak, to influence and impact, and to communicate 
like a confident and charismatic leader, then this course is for you. Go on to kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash course and get started today. I mean, this persistent and consistent thing is definitely yeah. something I've heard somewhere. Um, and the persistence is really, again, what I was mentioning earlier about going out there and doing whatever you need to do. Like, really go over and beyond what you're supposed to do to get what you want. If you want to win the 10 kilometer race, practice for 20. Right. Right? Don't practice 10 exactly. Yeah. Like, go over and beyond what you're supposed to do. This actually reminds me of, of, of the marathon. If you look at the marathon for the last, I think, 10 or 20 years, most of the winners are actually Kenyans, right? What's the reason? And, and the reason behind that is if you actually speak to the Kenyans who are, who are running the race, they have a, a different way of training. They train in hotter conditions. They, you know, they train they, for longer. Yeah. Uh, just it's tougher conditions. So by the time they yeah. arrive at the marathon, it's actually easy. Yeah. It's just, they, they train uphill. Yeah. So for them, literally, the marathon becomes a downhill thing. And when most people at around, you know, you can do the half marathon, but towards the last, for example, 10 Ks or 15 Ks is what, what separates everyone, right. you know, the winners from everyone else. Yeah. That's when they actually kick in. Yeah. Because they've just been, do, they haven't just been training for the marathon. Yeah. They've literally gone at a completely different level than the marathon is easy. And they probably don't have uh, a lot of things that, um, you know, getting in the way of uh, what they want to do. Mm. Probably not much going on, and you know, no net, no, no Netflix and chill, no McDonald's, no. You know what I mean? All the distractions. <clears throat> distractions are out of the way. Yeah. That that could uh, help too. Um, so what 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 would have <clears throat> been that point that helped you progress next level? Like Just, for me, it was developing my communication skill. Yeah. It's, Honestly, it's just the, I think the, my, my, e my eagerness to learn all the time. Mm -hmm. Just always want to learn. I want to do bigger and better things. Like, I'm never satisfied with just how it is right now. And so when you're at this point where you're going, okay, I don't, I'm not satisfied where it is. There's a bigger version of me or there's a bigger version of this that can happen. How do you figure out what to do? Are you, do you look at other individuals who have done it in the space? Yeah, I look at a you lot model? of, yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of people. I I try to study the the habits. So another another thing is, um, you know, there's a book. It's called A Thousand Hours, I think. Ten thousand. Ten thousand hours. Sorry. Yeah. It, it it's a simple concept, right? Mm -hmm. You do something for ten thousand hours, you become an expert at it. Mm -hmm. Makes total sense, right? You practice anything for 10,000 hours, you are bound to become good. If you put a basketball in here, one of those little baby ones, you keep throwing that ball, eventually your you muscle memory so is good. You are gonna get some more of them. You're gonna realize that your wrist needs to go like that or you throw it higher or something that's gonna make you better. Mm. That is just the bottom line. Mm. You know, and when, when someone told me that, I'm like, I was practicing it, but I didn't know that this was like a, a thing, like this 10,000 hours. So I was like, all right, so anytime I'm doing anything, uh, I'm just gonna keep doing it as much as I can till I get better and better. Mm. And that's really the, a, anyone, right? Even an artist, as soon as they come out, they got a song, right? They're not great. Mm. Justin Bieber's first song was all right. Look at him now. Yeah. Right? Look at where he's come to. Chris Brown, Drake. Yeah. Um, all these guys, you know, the, where they started and where they come. That's because they put in the hours to get to where they are. And it's funny because <clears throat> most people will look at these individuals and say they're naturals. What they don't realize is they have Develop this art. Have you of watched? Naturalness. Have you watched American Idol? Yes, back in the days. Yeah, that's you know, progression. You know how much time, yeah. how much talent there is in America? Yeah, everyone's talented. All right, but not everyone's got that mindset. But and the time that it takes to actually have that fluidity, that it takes time. Yeah, yeah. It's not that, just that talent. Too, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> For someone like yourself, you exude coolness. I don't know if you know this. I'm sure you do. Uh, but you exude coolness. Someone watching this, yeah. someone's listening to this, um, someone like myself, perhaps 20 years ago, if yeah. not even today, yeah. giving me some steps, a few steps that I can take to become cooler. Yeah. And I'm not saying it to, to feel better about myself, to be able to, because at the end of the day, if I have the confidence and I feel good about myself, I can yeah. go and do things. Yeah. At least as one aspect of achieving any goal that I right. want. What steps would you give someone like me? I mean, define cool, cool. I don't know how to define it. You're cool. I've got a, a middle brother. He's cool. He's just naturally cool. What about your youngest brother? Is he cool? Yeah, <laughs> My middle brother stands out for being naturally cool. Yeah. Will Smith is naturally cool. Yeah. Right? So 
if some people might be born with it, I still believe that there are steps that I can take from someone who's, as someone who's not cool and who wasn't cool at school. Yeah. I implemented some steps to become cooler. I yeah. wouldn't say I'm cool at all, yeah, yeah. but I was able to get out of that uncoolness you know, right. to, to yeah, a I better mean, level. Same, same with me too, I mean, in high school I was the same. But look, I mean, I don't, I mean, I agree with you, Will Smith is cool as He's just F. naturally, yeah. Like, yeah, like, oh my God, like he's super cool. Um, I definitely don't connect with the coolness. I'm out looking for it too. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. You know, I want to be like that. But then sometimes I'm like, I want to find the balance between being me and being cool. Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose myself and be cool. Mm -hmm. And Will Smith is naturally cool. That is him. The guy you see on YouTube and Instagram, when you meet him in person, that's really him. Which makes him cooler. Which makes him even cooler, yeah. Authenticity. So I feel like if you yeah. try, if you try to be cool, I think it will come up, come across not so cool. You could look cool, you could dress cool, go Google some of your favorite artists or rappers or singers or see what they dress like, and that's what I do. I'm like, yo, I like the way Kanye West dresses up. Let me find some pieces that look like him, or I like the way, I don't know, ASAP Rocky or Chris Brown or Drake dresses up when they go out, not on concert, not in a music video. Just when they're out. Yeah, just check out you know what they're wearing like uh, you know on regular days the sneakers they're wearing. So I try and find those things and wear it, and mm -hmm. that's uh, so that's look wise. Sure. And then attitude wise, I mean, you just gotta you can't you can't fake it, right? Yeah, but I'll give you an example. I my natural face is a what an ex girlfriend said was a constipated look. Oh. She's yeah. like, how are you feeling? I'm like, I'm feeling really good. Well, your face doesn't show it. Yeah. So I had to learn that smiling is an important aspect. So when I learned just yeah. the fact that if you smile, you look better, yeah. then- Great tip. It was a huge tip, right? Yeah. It was huge. Uh, the second aspect, when I said my, my middle brother is just cool, naturally cool, because yeah. when we grew up, I wasn't known for Kevin. I was known as Rami's brother. Right. The whole neighborhood knew me as Rami's brother. I'm like, my name is Kevin, goddammit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was cool about him was, he, was, he is a people's person. He's an extrovert. He's yeah. like, hey, how you doing? It feels like the whole, literally the whole suburb knows him. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so that's what I need to do. When, I, when we connected in the elevator, you were the third person. Yeah. I said hi to everyone. That, that's yeah. not my natural, my natural way is I would rather watch Netflix on my own. Yeah. But I was there, I was at the elevator. I took a tip from what Rami would do. Hey, what's up, man? I'm Kevin. Mm -hmm. And that helps, you know, people will just go, oh, he's, he's a cool person. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, no, I don't so know. So maybe about it's that. not cool. It's confident. It's yeah, sociable. I mean, it, a better version of yourself for sure. Yeah, it depends on what you're looking for. Sure. You want looks. You want to, you know, feel different. You want to feel better. If, if you feel, if you feel better, it's better than be feeling cooler. Right. Right. One hundred. Yes. I can tell you, to wear a super tight shirt. It may look cool, mm -hmm. but are you gonna feel good? Right. Not really, right? Yes, true. So uh, that's another thing. I, I felt like w if I dressed the way I want to dress, I yes. feel a lot better. So yes. I used to, you know, uh, start wearing like uh, shirts, wearing some shirts to work sometimes, or like if I had a meeting, I'd wear, uh, you know, take off my hat. Then I was like, you know, I just want to be me. Mm. Like that's the most important thing. I don't want to change me. I doubt like Drake walks into the Apple office and be, you know he he wears a suit just because. No, I'm sure he's exactly how he wants to. Dress and how, so being comfortable, I think, is the most important thing. And when you're comfortable, people are gonna feel comfortable with you, and mm. that's when people are gonna feel like, yo, this guy's a cool guy, right? Mm. And cool doesn't necessarily mean, oh, look good or whatever like that. Oh, yo, so it's just cool. What dude. you exude? Yeah, you no, know, you want, you just want to connect with people, and I, you want someone to say, oh my god, yo, that guy Kevin, yo, super cool guy. Mm. Um, and I don't think that has anything to do with. Uh, look, I mean, if you want to look good, if you're trying to get the ladies, mm. I can take you out shopping and dress you up, Stand, take you to my barber shop. Right <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, like, a, different, I, I that's a different show altogether. <laughs> get inspired. You know this by now that we are the number one YouTube show slash podcast that's coming out of the Middle East from Dubai. If you like the idea of having your brand reach at least a million eyeballs per episode, then feel free to reach out to my office on kevinabdurrahman.org. Without further delay, let's continue this great conversation. Would, would, would you say that a good haircut makes a difference? 100%. Because I feel different when I have a shave. 100%, like 100%. Because you feel good, now you start giving out this 
energy of feeling good yeah. and that person's picking it up 100%. Yeah. Dress, your shoes, all of it. How did you get the barbershop? Like what got you thinking? My like barber was, uh, the barber I was going to for like uh, five years was leaving. Okay. Uh, his barbershop was closing and I said, you can't leave. So <laughs> I opened the barbershop. Let, let me set up a barbershop. <laughs> yeah. And how did you get the name? Uh, my brother gave it to me. I can't remember what I wanted to call it. I had a couple ideas. He's like, yo, you're going to play songs and you're going to do cuts, beats and cuts. Nice. I was like, is it available on Instagram? And I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> it's literally a business 101 these days. You've got a lot of celebrities that come there. Yeah. As a business professional, how do you turn that, that business into a known brand where celebrities come through? I'm asking this because people who are watching this, they could own cafes or they want to set up a business. Yeah. What hacks or what tips can they learn in terms of you know, getting people through the door? Because if you don't yeah. have traffic, if you don't have sales, your business shuts down. Yeah. And nine out of 10 businesses fail in the first few years. I believe it, yeah. I mean, one thing is a lot of them were personal friends, so I started off small. I uh, bring in some DJs and like artists, but the one that really changed everything was when Will Smith uh, came to us. So we got a we got a call about a VIP client who wanted a, a service, and it turned out to be Will Smith. And when we got him, it's like we got some articles about it, and just kind of like skyrocketed from there. But Aside from that, so the barber I was telling you about, you know, who I, who I was going to, he was an ace barber, like super good. So when he came, we opened the barbershop, just me and him, and then we got another couple of guys who came through eventually. I mean, and then I kept, I tr I kept trying to bring the celebrities and all that in, but it's not a great model. Sure. Celebrities don't pay. They don't want to pay, and they want you to come to their hotel. They don't come to the shop. So, mm. so initially, it was a little tricky one, but like I said, the Will Smith situation definitely helped us out, and now he comes back. He's been back to us like three, four times already. Um, and then like you know, one of my barbers just cut uh, this uh, Afrobeat artist Wizkid mm. hair yesterday. Um, we, and you know, they Google us and they find us and then the reputation, but I feel like there's like a million barber shops that suddenly sure. just popped up out of nowhere after we, we started. Before there was not really like a barber shop, barber shop word. Man, just in the marina alone, there is a block and I swear every time I walk past, there's a new barber shop. Literally in that block, there is I think six or eight barber shops. It's one block. Really? Yeah. Is it so, where Goodfellas is over there? Yeah. And in that yeah. block, there's about six or eight. Yeah, it's crazy. I know. Um, I mean, so everyone needs to cut their hair, right? Yeah. So, so that's the thing. So, celebrity aside, how would you build that business? If you started today without your celebrity connections, mm -hmm. how would you make beats and cuts successful? Like what steps Supply you and take? demand, right? So you go, you put it into a place where people need it. For example, uh, I was in a mall that was not doing well, and I just moved to another location now uh, at Box Park. But before, I was in an unknown mall on the first floor. No one was coming there. So the only people who were coming were people who knew our business. Then I moved somewhere where it was on the main road and people can see. Now, So then it became the real estate yeah. thing, location, location, location. 100%, yeah. And I could have an even better location, right? I could be in a building. Uh, block like six buildings next to each other one right there and why do you think that you're saying that there's a block with six barbershops there must be like a million buildings around that area that's right so think about how many guys live in that in those buildings that's right think how many barbers need to cut all those guys hair mm. and this is like barbering is like food right your hair and your beard keeps growing and growing and growing sure and you got to look good so and if you get a taste of looking good it's like a drug you're gonna want to come back but say goodfellas is doing well yeah I'm not sure about the other ones I rarely see barbers close. Okay. I think there's room for, except for the guy next to us. I made him shut. <laughs> there was a guy who opened right across from us three months and he shut. <laughs> um, but I rarely see barbers close. Mm. Rarely, rarely. I, I mean, you do see it, but people need to cut their hair, right? Right. If it doesn't work out, it's too expensive. You make it cheap, they come. You, f you, f you can figure it out. How do you deal with where you're at? You mean at the roof or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, like how do you deal with, with, with the status that you've achieved today? How do you deal with it? Um, I'm, I can go deeper. How do you deal with the criticism? How do you deal with the jealousy? Um, how do you deal with the fame, you know, being wanted? Yeah. Take your pick or all of them. Uh, I deal with it. Uh, and I'm really just asking <clears throat> because people who are watching this, there are many times where I've, I've you know, worked with individuals and often when they arrive at a place of success, it's a bit haunting for them because they didn't think it through yeah. or they didn't know what to experience. <clears throat> so everything is first time. 
And I'm yeah. hoping that through the lessons they can learn from you, it saves them from banging their head against the wall. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a, it's a feeling of like time's running out and I, need, and I still need to do more. Okay. I don't wake up ever like, oh my God, you know. I made it. Uh, I made it, yeah, I'm done. You know, I can sit back and relax. No, it's a constant struggle. It's always been like that. Never have I ever stopped and said, all right, you know, I'm good. That's it. I'm going to just chill out. I'm going to sit at home today and not do anything. Um, you don't take breaks? Not really, no. Mm -hmm. I feel like my job is such a great job. I don't think I need breaks. You mm. don't need breaks from DJ gigs or, you know, going to record a podcast. Or, you know, I don't, I'm not going to leave this podcast and be like, oh, my God, I'm going to take the rest of the day off. Mm. I'm super tired. Or I'm not going to do anything before I get here. Or we go to shows. Like, you know, you know with Ridge, we've been filming all the behind the scenes of the shows and stuff. And even he, like he, they don't really get to see what, a lot of stuff that I do. And we're like, we're we're literally learning uh, more about ourselves by putting ourselves out there and doing more. Yeah. Sure. That, the motto is to do more, to get more content. Because if we're getting more, if we're out there to get more content, that means we're doing more. If we're doing more, I'm satisfying what I'm trying to do. And if we're doing more and we're got content, people are seeing what we're doing. And then those people are gonna want more from, it's literally a circle that's just gonna get better and better. We're, we're going on an international tour uh, like in a couple of weeks too. And part of it's that mentality and attitude and part of it's literally just putting it out there into the universe. Because we sat down, we're like, listen, this year we wanna do this. We wanna put out a song, we wanna do tours, we wanna do this, and it's just all, we're just watching it all come in. And even though that happens, and you know, you can ask the guys, like, I'm not like, hey guys, remember the letter we wrote to the universe? and we got it, let's just chill for the rest. No, it's like every day, hey guys, what's next? What's next? What's next? What are we doing? So it's- You write a letter to the universe? <clears throat> All the time. Do you? Yeah. Tell me more about this. Um, so this I do out. it more in the form of a, like a, in, the, in forms of vision boards. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely- You I cut, the, the ones where I've done it, where yeah. you cut out pictures? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. And I have loads of them that have come true, by the way, loads. Like I put a picture of Will Smith on my vision board and I met him. Um, that, I didn't put a picture of them to meet him, but I put a picture of him and like sort of like in an entertainment, like you know what you said, like cool guy, family guy. Like I was like, this is this is who I want to be. And then just happened to meet him. The picture of the car that I put on my vision board, I got the exact same car, same exterior, same interior, oh, awesome. like exact same one. But uh, yeah, we you know it's a constant struggle to become better. Uh, to grow, to get out there, to get more people to know about us. Um, and, and not that's the most important thing, but to become more famous because we want to build our tribe and our following so that we are able to, you know, travel more and do more and get more deals and to, to, to do what we love, which is perform, create music and entertain. And where are you punching? Because so you've got goals for the coming year yeah. or the next coming months because you yeah. don't like to, to plan yeah, too yeah. far out. <laughs> um, you're going on international tours. You want to put out a new song. You're doing a few things. Yeah. When you're setting up your goals, how, how high are you setting them? Do you feel that they're achievable? Are you setting them up beyond yeah, a no, certain comfort zone? No, 100% achievable. I mean, I think if you're setting out your goals, you should uh, set your goals pretty high, but also very realistic. And so you have a strategy on it? We, this is what we're gonna set and this yeah, is how we're gonna do it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you gotta have a strategy in mind. I mean, so, some things are a little difficult, right? If I told you how much money do you want, Kevin? Mm. You know, how much money would you like in your bank account? 100 mil would be nice. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, why not 200 mil? Sure, I'll take See that too. See what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a weird, uh, it's a weird thing, right? Mm. Um, that's, that's, sort, that's really sort of, you know, so when you ask me the question, that's, that's where I kind of find myself, like 100 mil, but 200 is good. 200 mil, you know? And if, if you said 200, I would, have said, I would have told you, yo, why not 400 or right. a billion, yeah. right? But what I have is I have a clarity of, well, at, at least now at this stage with maturity and wisdom and experience, I have the clarity of knowing I'm not the kind of person who wants to build an empire. I'm not the kind of person who wants to run a whole bunch of people. Part of the reason we've set up actually this podcast was with a very clear understanding. I will only invite people that I like. Yeah. Leave the invitation with me because I want to make sure it's personal. Yeah. Um, I'll have the chat with them and then from there on, which is why when you said when is it going to be released? Because I said I don't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah. So I'm clear about that. I'm clear about the kind of money I want to have. I just said 100 million, but the yeah. kind of money I want to have was to make sure that my family and myself are taken care of. Sure. So we don't have to worry about money and I can say travel the world and do what I do. 
whatever that figure is. Yeah. But I've got this clarity that has come from experience and time and realizing because at yeah. the beginning I was like, I want to be a billionaire. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to be a So billionaire. freaking bad. <laughs> Good old Bruno Mars. Um, look, I mean, money is definitely, they say money is the root of all evil. Hell no. Uh, but I don't think you should have that kind of relationship with it. Not at all. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, it's a great thing. Yeah, it's a great thing, but you shouldn't chase money, you should let money chase you. So mm -hmm. that's another very important thing. Um, and it's really not about the money, but it is about the money, if that makes sense. Let me just... Huh? What it can do for you. Yeah, but yeah. let me ask you this because since you brought up money, you're at a stage, I mean, your name has the title of what you do. I mean, your skill is in your name, DJ yeah. Bliss. They're not paying you for what you do. Mm -hmm. They're paying you for who you are. Um, both. How do you, both. For me, it's both. Yeah, but there, I want DJ Bliss to play. Yeah. It's not, let's put a tender out and see which one of the three DJs will give us a price quote. I'm pretty sure that when they reach out to you, you're at a stage now where they're going, we want DJ Bliss. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So they're coming for you. The skill set in terms of the minimum you can deliver is already a given. Yeah. How, if someone wants to get to this stage in any aspect of life, what would be the things you'd suggest for them to do? Um, or how did you get to this point? Because then the money then comes because they want you. Yeah, I mean, a lot of hard work, um, a lot of dedications to my art. Um, I was really focused on the brand as well. Like, you know, you kind of like, uh, Tapped, uh, tapped on it a bit in terms of like building the DJ Bliss brand. Right. Um, and I don't know, I was, I was, I was kind of like good at this whole brand thing. That's why I was able to set up my 411 nights and the barber shop. And I set them all up myself, literally. For sure had help, uh, but I don't know, I was just good at it. I, was, I don't come from like an advertising or marketing background. I just come from sort of seeing a lot of cool things when I travel, I get a lot of ideas or now on the internet, it's easy because you find whatever you need and just created it. And then for the DJ Bliss brand, yeah, I mean, I, I was watching, you know, like I said, insp inspired by everybody. I want the skill of this guy. I want the brand of this guy. I want the, you know, uh, the talent of this person. I want this and that person. I just take it all. And I want the radio skill of this person, the TV skill. I want to be like a Ryan Seacrest. I want to be like DJ Khaled. I want to mm. be like Jazzy Jeff. I want to So literally took all the good things and just brought it together into, you know, what, what I do. And like I said, if Instagram or social media closes, what are you gonna do? I've got the talent. I can go fall back on DJing, I can go uh, radio shows, I can go TV shows, I can do business, I can do any of that stuff, so. You've got the skill. Yeah, it's, it's, it, th this is what I do. And mm. this is not like, uh, I'm, not in this, I'm not in the barber business because, uh, um, because I wanna make more money. I could've made more money maybe another way, but you know, I had a general interest in, you know, the Keeping barber. Keeping your barber. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and just like the barber industry, I thought it was a really cool industry. Um, Here it continues to grow, like you said, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that's sort of the reasons, uh, you know, behind it. Time traveling, because we can't do it. So yeah. That's a fun question to ask. If you can have a conversation, a sit down like this, where, you, where you're going to need a couple of bottles of water, with the younger version of you at 20. Oh, my God. What would you tell him? Whew, so much. I tell him to... Yeah. Oh my God, so much. I mean, it's it's all hypothetical, right? Because it's really not possible. But I mean, I, you, hope, you, I hope that people watch this and kind of like get the message. You know, if some if this sort of connects with some a 20 year old person out there who's listening or of any age, not only a 20 year old, sure. that would make me super happy. Uh, and I don't feel like, uh, I don't believe in like keeping the secrets or the keys for yourself. I feel like really just giving out uh, to everyone to be successful. Absolutely. Because the more you give, the more comes in, man. Yeah, it's and flow. I don't think, uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not one of those things where, you know, if I give you the secrets, then I, I lose out. I really don't believe it's like that at all. I think mm -hmm. there's room for everyone to eat and be successful. Uh, but what, what would you tell your 20-year-old self? Because when we're 20, I'm just thinking of myself at 20, man. Yeah. The unnecessary fears, the lack of confidence, for example, or the mistakes I made. I mean, I just if I if I could go back, I'd want to save myself on making a few mistakes. I'd be like, oh, I just take this route, <laughs> or just go right here, or yeah. tackle left here, um, or do more of this. Do it sooner. You know, sometimes we do something. I'm like, why haven't I done it sooner? Than yeah. This? Like the podcast, I could have easily done it five years ago. Yeah. I mean, look, I'll give you an example of why 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 this uh, this doesn't work for me. Vlogging. Mm -hmm. I started vlogging in 2009, like a day in the life. I put a camera in front of me, point and shoot, and way before it was even way, called vlogging. It wasn't even like called vlogging back then. And I believe if I kept doing it, mm -hmm. 
at that time, I would've been ahead of everyone, mm -hmm. right? So when I started doing it three, four years ago, I was like, yo, I, did, I started doing it, I'm gonna do it. So I did it four years ago, but it didn't click. Mm -hmm. My wife just started vlogging like eight months ago. She did a make a video, blew up, 100,000 subscribers, 12, uh, 17 million views on her videos. Wow. It's just, the, life is, we're exactly how it's supposed to be. There's there an is Arabic no, saying, maktub. Yeah, yeah. It's, this is exactly how it was supposed to be. We're ex supposed to be here right now, yes. have, you know, shooting this podcast, and you know, this is, there's, no, there's nothing you can really go back and do. Ex what advice can you give? I mean, everyone, everyone already uh, knows that we could have gone and like, instead of going left there, you could have gone right there. We could have done this better or that better, but it's all hypothetical. Yeah. How, I'm just focusing on how I could go back and tell myself tomorrow morning what to do tomorrow, because yes. that's what makes the difference. That's true. There's no point in me going back and telling the, tw you know? 20 year old self. Yeah, yeah. It, it, who knows, right? Who knows what could have changed? Mm. Your boy, Zayed, yeah. if you could give him, I'm sure he'll learn a lot from you and mom, but if he could take away one lesson, or if you could impart with him only one lesson, or one characteristics, or one trait, yeah. to help him have the best life he could, yeah. what would that be? Like, what would you say is fundamental <clears throat> for um, him, and then everything else will just be from, you know. Yeah, I kind of like cycle. tell him, even though I, I, I'm, he looks at me like, why are you having these kind of conversations with me right now? But I still tell him, like, even right now at this age, he's like just over a year old. And I'm like, you know, just be a good person, be kind, you know, be loving. Um, be the best version of yourself, you know, keep God close to you, your family. And these are just all, you know, values that I want to have. And I really want him to, to, to grow up in a life that's better than what we had. And I'm sure, 100% sure, our parents thought exactly the same thing about yes. us too, right? And that's really, for me, that's the goal. And as long as he's happy, healthy, um, you know, and... That's, that's, the, that's the most important thing. Mm. I think that those are the sort of the, like the key fundamentals of uh, you know what I'd like them to grow up with. That's nice, man. Yeah. Uh, family aside, mm -hmm. what are you grateful for? Man, grateful for everything. Grateful to be alive. Grateful for you know having done what I've done in my career. Uh, even though I may sound ungrateful a lot of times, like I don't want that to to come across 100% super grateful about everything that's happened. Mm. Do I want more? Yes. Um, and that's what keeps me going. That's the only reason why I have that attitude, but not for a second am I not grateful. And I'm really grateful for every day, you know, even like some of the uh, audio stuff that I, uh, pieces that I listen to is, you know, uh, gratefulness is very important. Go to sleep at night, grateful for today and exactly what happened, grateful for this podcast, grateful for this meal I had, grateful for, you know, the day to get through the day. So you go to sleep uh, grateful and then wake up again, same thing, grateful and open to what's the day gonna bring you. <clears throat> this right here, you need to either watch this part again or listen to, I mean, the whole thing again anyway. But this part right here is so critical that I don't, re don't feel that a lot of people actually realize the mm -hmm. aspect of gratefulness yeah. and how much peace it could actually bring in your life. Yeah. Have you always had this? Was it taught to you? Was there a critical point in your life that you kind of ventured into it? You know in Islam, so one of the things they teach us or uh, one of the fundamentals is just being grateful, alhamdulillah, for everything, right? right? Thank yes. God for everything. So I mean, this is something they teach you and you, you learn as a kid, but it's well, we can say Alhamdulillah in passing, which yeah. many of us do. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah. But there is a significance to it. Yeah. And everyone has their time where they realize it. And I'm just wondering, was it at an early stage? No. Was there a point it's, in time where... It's actually, it's actually pretty, uh, pretty recent uh, in, in this form. Literally, before I go to sleep at night, I'm like, all right, let me close my eyes. Let me think about what I did today. I'm grateful that I have these cars. I'm grateful that I sat down and I got invited to this podcast today. I'm grateful that I had a meal today. I'm grateful that it rained today. Mm. I'm grateful that I got to see my dad today. Right before I came here, I went and dropped off a sandwich for him because, uh, you know, he doesn't eat lunch. Like, he stays there. I'm like, I stopped by. So, literally, if you go to sleep every night grateful for every little thing that happened in your life, man, you're going to wake up. Your life is going to be so different, like, you would not believe it. Like I have these, uh, and I have these 20 morning affirmations that I read every day religiously. I've actually stuck it in my, in my mirror in my bathroom. So, because who you, doesn't want to read 20 morning affirmations every course. day, right? You, are you wrote them read down? It? I printed it. Okay. Yeah, I'll send it to you as well, but uh, so you can take a look at it. 
Can we make it available? Yeah, absolutely. It's on. If you if you Google it, it's, it will show up on Google. Okay, so we'll either Google it and yeah. find the link, or we'll get uh, yeah. you know something from you, and we'll place it in the show show notes. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, let me read it for you real quick, we'll so you know that, what, yeah. it, what what it is. And you do this every day, every, religiously. It's been like almost two months. Rich knows about it. Where did you, where did you put the one I gave you? <laughs> I gave I gave one back pocket. I gave one to, I gave one to everyone in the office. And what I, what got you? But, but I just found it. I'm like. Some, I, I read something by Earl Nine, Nightingale. Yes. Uh, and it was talking about saying, doing some stuff every day. Then I found these affirmations. I'm like, if I read these every single day. Because it sounds like a hassle, man. Yeah. It's the last thing I want to do when I wake up. Yeah, well, what, what, what is the price you're willing to pay for a good life? See, yeah, this is really good. Yeah? What, what is the price you're willing to pay? What is the price LeBron is, is willing to pay for these championships? Mm. He's practicing every day, bro. Mm. Every day. You know how many basketball games they play? Mm. They play like a, a ridiculous lot. amount of basketball yes. games. And then do you know how much practice that they do? Mm. Like this is just the price that you pay for. Price of admission. Yeah. yeah. So, he, so this is 20 more and every day. And I, and I have this stuck in the mirror in my bathroom. I have an abundance of energy. I am free of pain. Today is my day. Today I'll change my life. I'm strong, I'm beautiful, I'm loved. Unlimited energy will find me today. Today I'm a magnet for ideas. I'll be a giver of love today. The sunrise fills me with confidence. Whatever challenges come my way, I can overcome them. Today I will learn and grow. I'll be a better person today. I will help someone today. I love who I see in the mirror. Success will find me today. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for another day to shine. Today is full of possibilities. I will be fearless today. As soon as I finish that, I bang on my chest like a lion and I scream, and then I get my day started. Man, that is. You do that I every feel it, man. day. I feel it. Yeah, you, you, bro, you do that every day. Just do it for me for 30 days, and then come back to me and say, hey, that, that did nothing for me. Man, I ask you because I believe in it. Um, I went through a, a youth where I was anxious. Mm -hmm. I was always like chasing. And then, yeah, just through listening to you know great motivational speakers like Earl Nightingale and yeah. some you know great folks out there, and they like Tim Ferriss, yeah, um, Jim Rohn's, Jim Rohn's, yeah, fantastic. And this was just a common thing where they said practice gratitude. Yeah. And when I started doing it, I just had this peace. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's just re repetition. Like I said, if you if you keep telling yourself something so many times sometimes if you heard a lie enough times you start you start believing it, it. Yeah. absolutely and we do let me ask you this question then since you brought it up what's the lie that most people are believing in that you're looking at it and going this is a lie and yet most people are believing it uh, like you're going it isn't right like like what you said like i'll wake up in the morning the old me would say man i don't have the energy for 20 affirmations yeah and you're like how much is your your life worth. Yeah, how much you, what's the price you're willing to pay? Yeah, and unless it clicks for me, truly on a cellular level, I'll never get to a point where I'm reading it. Like, I believe in gratefulness, yeah. so I do this. Yeah, but I mean, gratitude like, and affirmation. you know, we started at the beginning of, the, uh, of this recording, we, we spoke about everybody wants a better quality of life. That's right. But who's willing to pay the price? You know, and this is the price that you want to pay. If I told you that if you read 20 affirmations a day, it would change your life. Would you believe me or no? Because it's, it, bro, it has changed my life. The last two months, uh, it has changed my life. Like, stuff's just happening. I'm like, wow. I'm going to read that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, mean, it, I didn't come up with this. You know about it. Yeah. So you listen to Earl Nightingale, Jim Rowan, or, you know, Napoleon Hill's uh, book. Yeah, Success Leaves Clues. Yeah. yeah they've, they've shared it all. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, this is not, uh, I didn't make this, any of this up. You know, but just, the old me wouldn't believe it. So like 20 years ago, yeah. you would say the same thing and I wouldn't believe yeah. it. Yeah, I mean there's loads of people like that. I mean like, yeah. you know, like I tell people sometimes it, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. yeah. From your perspective, from your industry, where do you see the opportunity over the next five or 10 years? Within yourself. Nice. Yeah, I mean, really, if you spend a little bit more time with yourself, and this sounds super weird to some people, but they're, they're, you can figure so many things out so many we all have the same brain we all have the same capabilities um just people just look in the wrong place you know mm. oh, i gotta go soul search i gotta go to this country and i gotta speak to this person but even when you speak to uh, you know like uh 
healers or life coaches and all that, they just they redirect everything back to you. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would say like, just, you know, search within yourself. We're often too, too afraid to do it because we're not willing to, to pay the price. We're too afraid to ask the question and then we're too afraid of the answers. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, we, we look for a lot of excuses. As mm. humans, we uh, try to play the blame game. Ah, oh, you know, but I grew up like this and my mom was like that and my dad was like this and the city I lived in was like that. Nobody cares about excuses, mm. right? People care about results. And I think um, you, just gotta, you gotta push through and find a way to, to just kind of get what you want. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, well said, man. Yeah, thank you. How will history rem remember you? So they'll say, Oof. it will say DJ Bliss, it will say Bliss, it will say Marwan Parham Alawadi was. Yeah. Um, 500 years from now. Think about this question all the time, man. Um, I mean, I well, definitely- would you like to be remembered? I, you know, I'd definitely like to be remembered as uh, a pioneer and sort of, you know, the things that I uh, touched on. I was really the first in a lot of things that I did as an Emirati, like the first one doing English uh, TV shows or being an English speaking personality on radio or even as a DJ. So, uh, but I don't want to be just remembered for that. I want I want to be remembered for you know pushing uh, the the culture or the music scene to you know beyond the the UAE and that's that's really one of my uh, key focuses right now to try and see how I can get be out of here it's, we bring we import so much talent over here but I'm like yo why don't we have like this one talent that comes out of here and goes there and and that's really which is what you're doing like main goal yeah London Miami yeah yeah you're, you're all over the place yeah I'm gonna be I want to be sitting in the, on that chair next to Ellen on the Ellen show Telling people the story about Dubai. Nice. Yeah. We'll look back at this bro and when it happens. Yeah, make sure make sure you make sure you put Ellen's link down there. <laughs> <laughs> to Bliss's interview on Ellen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I just feel like I feel like every city has like if if, if I named a, a city or a country, you would be able to name me an artist, right? South Korea. Right. Who would you That Gangnam guy. There you yeah. go. What about Sweden? Sai, right? Sweden. You should, what about Sweden? <laughs> I'm musically, uh, what's the word for it? Challenged. Music? Yeah. Who's from Sweden? Oh, Thingamiji. I, I do know a name. ABBA. It's not coming. There you Abba, go. Yeah. There we go. Australia. Like, you can think. Savage Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Classic. They were good. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, so, you know, yeah. I want to be like Canada. Who would you say? Drake. <laughs> Who? Ever Levine, El man. Draco. Yeah. Oh, Drake. Yeah. Oh, I'm old school, Ever Levine. Yeah. yeah. Brian, <laughs> Brian Adams. <laughs> Do you want yeah. to be the UAE's one? Yeah, when someone's doing this years from now and they say UAE and I want them to say DJ Bliss. That, that's really like my, my goal. Man, that's, that's really good. Yeah. In a world where it's very difficult to get people's attention, mm -hmm. if you had the world's attention for 60 seconds, mm -hmm. what advice would you give? Uh, advice for them? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll just say, you know, figure out what you want to do, um, and you'll find that answer within yourself. And once you figure out exactly what you want to do, go out and give it your all, like everything over and beyond, um, to make it really great. And don't be afraid of failing. It might fail, uh, and if it does, it's fine. Then you just repeat this process over again. But you know, give it your all. Don't be in that, oh, I'm gonna kinda try this, and then if it doesn't work, then I can always do that. No, like literally just go all the way out and push as far as you can. Um, because people usually quit, you know, this right before things are gonna become mm. uh, successful. So, um, yeah, man, just go, you know, push through as hard as you can and see where it leads you and just do whatever makes you happy. I think that's one of the most important things as well. 100%, man. Yeah. And I appreciate the fact that um, you've shared this because it, it's really genuine what you're saying you, you exude. I mean, what you're saying is really what you're living. Yeah, 100%, 100%. I mean, I think it goes for everyone though, right? Mm. I mean, uh, I think you kind of like, you pick that up from anyone. You, you, you catch their vibe and what they're like. And sure. the, that, that's usually a reflection of who they are. Success, what does it mean for you? Oh man. I mean, it means so many things. Uh, 
in 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 the in the in the dictionary world, you know, success is such a weird success for bliss. <laughs> Yeah, just you know, greater greater achievement, recognition, and again, followers are not a great example. Sure. But I don't want social media followers. I want fan base followers. Mm. I want to be in a in a concert with tons of people watching my show. Um, just so happens that social media plays a part in that. But you know, I want to, I want to have those people like really connecting with what I'm doing. Whether it's uh, you know, whether it's content, whether it's a uh, music or shows or anything like that. I really just want to. Uh, I want people to see what I'm doing. And I really feel, feel like that's the main goal for me, to show people more uh, what I do. Mm. And I feel like once I let them into my house, then you know they'll hang around. I think I just not, not had enough people over yet. That's a nice one, that's yeah. a nice one. This question came to me, I was gonna close it off and I'm gonna ask it and then I'm gonna close it off. All right, cool. Because so you got <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps coming. You, you know, you've done the F1, yeah. huge audience. Mm -hmm. uh, the Special Olympics in Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. huge audience. Uh, the launch of 2020 mm -hmm. Expo, you know, one year to go for that huge audience. How do you get the confidence for all this? I'm asking because there will be a lot of people who have dreams, who have goals, who have perhaps their skill set, but they lack the confidence. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's nerve-wracking for sure. Like, even at your stage? Yeah, 100%. Everybody, by the way, even uh, Lady Gaga, Beyonce, everyone. You, you, if you research, you, they all like that. So it's a little nerve-wracking, but... That point right after nerve wrecking is just bliss. pure bliss. Yeah. <laughs> thank man, you very much, man. I, I really appreciate the fact yeah, that thank you, you man. made it. It was hard to get you, but <laughs> well worth the wait. Thank you, man. I'm glad uh, I got a chance to come and hang out, and I, I really wish you like the best of luck with this podcast. Thank you, man. And, uh, you know, your questions were great. It was a great chat. I think. Uh, thank overall. you. And then what, that's what we aim to do. Is yeah. yeah. Great, man. Thank you very Make much. Make sure it's a conversation. I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. Um, folks. I don't know about you, but um, I've been following this guy for easily over a decade. Um, there's so much that I got out of this conversation and there will be so much more that I will get a second time because I review these videos and I write summary notes which will make available on the website. So please watch this video again or listen to it on the podcast again. I guarantee that you will get even more the second time around. I hope that you realize that with this show, we, we, um, the aim is not to show off. Uh, if that's the case, they can always follow you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> because you'll see glitz, glamour, and I like, like I said at the beginning as well, pretty much any celebrity I know, I just need to go on his feed. And I'll be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's all good. They, they were in Dubai, alrighty then. Um, I try. For the guys that would like to follow you, yeah. um, where's the best place for them to follow um, you? Instagram, DJ Bliss Dubai. Uh, Facebook's the same, DJ Bliss Dubai. And uh, my website's got all the links, so you go to djbliss.com. We'll uh, place all of that as well in the yeah, show links. And YouTube, I've got some cool stuff on YouTube that you can check out too. And uh, yeah, man, just come to one of the shows, or I'd be happy to meet anybody one day. And, uh, say what's what up. you guys have to say, yeah. 100%. If you have any questions, please ask them below. I'll try and answer them. Hopefully we can get Bliss to answer a yeah, few. Yeah, whatever you need. Um, th that'd be fantastic. We might st oh, I might start getting a bit more social and use social media. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I'm still a work in progress. Uh, we'll get them answered for you. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope that you got value out of the show. I believe that we were able to give you value. If, you, if his voice, if Marwan's voice, if Bliss's voice connected with you, then I'm sure you would have got value out of it. So I hope that you get inspired, you get informed, and you get going. Until the next episode, be kind, be ambitious, be grateful. I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. This is How Do They Do It. You can play Montel Jordan's song now. This is yeah. how we do it. <laughs> I forgot what I wanted to say. Everybody, Kevin's password is... <laughs> <laughs>